Hey guys, Chip here, and I got some really fun news to share with you today. It's this brand new Blender add-on. Uh, I call it Quick Shot, and I think it's going to change how you think about presenting your finished projects. So first, let's talk about Blender and how far they've come with their new EV renderer. As many of you know, Blender can now do photorealistic rendering right in the viewport, pretty much in real time. It's actually stunning technology. In the same five minutes it used to take me to create a single render, I can now create full HD quality animations. So I started thinking, how can I make creating an animation in Blender as easy as creating a single render? And after lots of thought and viewing many professional product animations and a little help from two friends, Jerry and Ahmed, I came up with a very simple design for a multi-camera animation tool that's super easy to use. In fact, it only has a couple of buttons and operates using a familiar list-based approach, just like you're used to, with modifiers. So one thing I discovered after watching a ton of smartphone and tech product animations is they're composed of multiple shots, and each shot travels from A to B. The camera rotates and translates, it speeds up, it slows down, it moves at a set rate, and then cuts to the next shot. And if you think about it, it's all incredibly simple. The key is in the timing and the order. So that's exactly how I created the interface for QuickShot, around these few key features. Number one, it must use multiple cameras, each camera comprising a single shot. Number two, the ability to easily set each camera's in and out keyframes. And to do this without having to explicitly select the camera, press the I keyboard command and select the type of keyframe you're trying to set. We need to make this easier. Number three, allow for both spline-based and linear interpolation, which just means you can have the camera motion ease in and ease out or travel at a fixed rate. Number four, make it easy to change the shot duration at any time with all the cameras and timelines instantly being updated. And number five, easily change the shot order at any time with the timeline being instantly updated as well. So let's take a look at the interface and see how simple it is to create multi-shot animations. Just press the Add Shot button to add a new camera to your scene. The new camera now has a row created with all its settings. Press the In or Out buttons to go specifically to that frame in the timeline. Type in the duration field the number of frames you want for a particular shot. And use the option drop down to choose whether to use a spline based motion path or a linear based motion path. And then press one of these buttons to move the camera up or back a row in the sequence order for the animation. And this button obviously deletes the camera shot from the overall sequence. And the real sweet part is you can control click on either the in or the out button to create a keyframe for the shot camera. You don't even have to have the camera selected. How cool is that? And there's some other neat features as well. For instance, press this little heart button and you'll instantly copy to the clipboard the text for a driver that can be used to continually animate the rotate, location, or scale parameter of any object in your scene. So let's take a look at the QuickShot add-on in action. So to install QuickShot, it's pretty darn easy. Just like you'd install any other add-on, you open up Preferences, go to Add-ons, and you'll hit the Install button and you'll find the QuickShot zip file and then you just hit install add-on. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed. Okay, here we are in a scene with this transponder object that I had created before. And as you can see, we have actually a single camera in the scene. And what we want to do is we want to create a multi-shot sequence using quick shots. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to change this to the dope sheet so I can see all my cameras as I create them. Okay, now the dope sheet is open. Let's go in and let's move this over and make it, make it pretty decent size. Then I'll go into the view and I'm going to say lock camera to view. And the reason for this is so I can move the camera around easily by just selecting an object and rotating. Works great. And in order to do this, of course, you're going to need your preferences set for navigation to orbit around selection. And I particularly like the zoom to mouse position turned on as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the quick shot. I'm going to go over here, click on quick shot. And, and one thing about quick shot, because we have all these rows, you may have to expand it out a little bit farther, but it's very simple. There's 
clear all the shots, add shot, and docs. Let's go ahead and add a shot right now. So when we add a shot, we've created a camera called Shot 1. We put it as default frames from 1 to 100. I can change this by just saying 50, and now you can see it goes from 1 to 51. So that's pretty cool. It also automatically sets up your frame start and frame end over here. So as you can see, if I press the space bar for the animation, we're not going anywhere. And so what I can do at any time is I can just rotate this around or move it out or change the position of what I want it to be. Something like this. Let's just do a real simple move and translate. Something like this. And I'll go over to the out button and I'll hold the control button down when I click on it. And that's going to set the out position. Now if I click on out, It'll take me to the out, I click on in, it'll take me to the in. And I can, of course, play from the in to the out. So that's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Now, if I want to, I can do things like go in and add depth of field to my camera. So I'm going to just grab this camera, and I'll say depth of field. I'll turn that on. And if you recall from my other videos, that a lot of times the way I want to do this is take the f-stop all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and this time click on something like this little screw switch. And you can see that that is new, the new target for the depth of field. And then I'll adjust the f-stop, maybe something like so. And then again, I can hit the play button and we're good to go. That's the first 50 frames. So let's go ahead and add another shot. Add shot. And this time we're going to go to the end of the second shot and we're going to have 100 frames. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically cruise right by it at a really tight angle. So I'll start something like this. And once I've got that, I'll hold the control key down, hit the in button. And now I want to copy this same one over to the out button. So I'll hold the control and shift and hit the out button. Now you can see the out button has been duplicated from the in. So I'll select this object and I'm going to move it from here. I'm going to move the camera something like so. Maybe tilt it just a little bit as well. And then I'll hold the control key down and I'll press the out button. And now I have a keyframe set at the out position. So I hit the space bar. You see there's my first shot and there's the second shot. And they're both spline based interpolations, but I want the second shot to be a linear interpolation. So I'll click here and then I'll go to the in and I'll hit space and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to want to go ahead and set the depth of field for camera two. So I'll go down here at the very bottom, select camera two, go in it, turn the depth of field on, do my turn the f-stop off. And this time I'm going to use just a focus distance. The distance will be changing with me. So we'll start off something like there. And then as we play, we'll see that it changes as you go through the scene. Okay, let's add one last shot. And this shot will be kind of a set it view so i'll go to the in spot here move out set it up something like so maybe this is where i want it to end up is something like this right here so i am going to hit the control key set the in oh go over here to the out and hit the control key and copy to the out and let's go back to the in and let's just move out just a little bit so that we can see what this looks like i'll, I'll kind of position it over here and control key hit the in go to the end hit the space bar and this is our our move okay and now that's kind of a, a set move so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move that to the very first one so i'll take the shot three move it up and move it up now shot three is at the beginning so if i go to the very beginning and i hit this i can see i have 100 frames here i've got 50 frames here and i've got another 100 frames here which is really i want that to be maybe something like 70. Another thing I want to do is I want to rotate this dial as we move forward. So let's go back in to the very first frame. And I'm going to click this little button up here, which is copying the driver to the clipboard. And I'm going to go into our item and I'll select that little piece right there. And on our rotation Z, I'm going to just hit paste. And it's got frame times 0 0.015. Now I can adjust these numbers in this at any time. Notice when I hit spacebar now, that dial starts to rotate and it continues to rotate all the way through all three shots. So once all these shots are set up, you're going to want to render them. And the easiest way to do that is come down to your render settings, choose an output folder. I have a place that I call videos blender. 
quick shot. This is going to be 211 frames. I'm going to choose 30 frames per second. I will set the format type to FMPEG video. And I'll set the container to MPEG-4, which works with YouTube and other video editors. And I'm going to set my output quality to perceptually lossless. And now I'll go up here. I'm using Power Save. I love this little add-on. And I'll save it. And all we need to do is now go into our EV settings. And we might want to turn on motion blur. Probably the default settings are fine. If we have an object being animated, it's not going to motion blur. So that might be a little bit confusing if you have an animated object. If you don't animate any objects, you can set up motion blur without any trouble in Eevee. The new 2.9 Eevee is going to fix that, so not to worry. That's on its way. And we're all good. So just go up here and say render, render animation, and it will create the file for you. So that's basically it. It's incredibly straightforward, incredibly simple. All you need to do is use this very simple interface and you can create your own multi-camera animations just as fast as that. By the way, you can check this out at both Blender Market and Gumroad. Thanks for watching. We'll see you online. Bye.